Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues, your daily dose of health and medical news. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and here is what I bring to you all from the world of medicine. Statins, the first line lipid lowering therapies which have been used widely to prevent cardiovascular diseases. Limited studies have investigated the association between statin use and the progression of arterial stiffness which is seen as a key player in the pathophysiology of cardiovascular diseases. Now to examine the association between the statin use and the progression of this arterial stiffness in adults with high atherosclerotic risk that has been measured by brachial ankle pulse wave velocity a recent cohort study was conducted and later on went on to get published in the JAMA network. The study that I'm talking about assessed the brachial ankle pulse wave velocity of close to 5100 adults with high atherosclerotic risk and it found that statin use was associated with a lower baseline brachial ankle pulse wave velocity and its slower progression when compared with the non-statin users. The statin users were those who were prescribed any statin medication at least 6 months before the brachial ankle pulse wave velocity measurements. The results also showed that among the 5100 adults with the assessment of this velocity, 1310 statin users were matched with 1310 non-statin users that was the matching ratio was 1 is to 1. And compared with the non-statin users, the statin users were associated with a significantly lower brachial ankle pulse wave velocity at baseline. Also, a significantly slower progression of this velocity was observed in the continuous statin users and high adherent users. Hence, it was concluded that statin use was associated with slower progression of arterial stiffness in adults with high atherosclerotic risk whether there is an association between an increase in the cannabis minimum legal age from 18 to 21 years with the youth cannabis use. A recent study published in the JAMA network reports a cross-sectional study with difference in analysis of close to 1000 youths aged 15 to 20 years, although youth cannabis use still increased after the policy amendment was made. The increase in the past three months cannabis use among youth aged between 18 to 20 years was 51% lower. However, there was no change which was noticed among the youths aged 15 to 17 years. In January 2020, a Canadian province, it raised the minimum legal age for cannabis use from 18 to 21 years. Although it is believed that a higher minimum legal age will definitely protect the youths from the harms of cannabis use. However, critics argue that it will push them back to the illegal market. The study sample included close to 1000 respondents and it was found that after the policy implementation, the increase in the past 3 months cannabis use among youths aged 18 to 20 years was 51% lower and the results were robust to several checks including accounting for possible confounding effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on the cannabis use. Hence, it was concluded that an increase in the minimum legal age from 18 to 21 years was associated with a significantly lower increase in cannabis use amongst youths aged 18 to 20 years, but no change was used in the cannabis use among those aged 15 to 17 years. These findings can help to alleviate concerns that youths would switch to illegal markets in response to a higher minimum legal age possible link between people who had a previous heart attack history or diabetes condition and gum diseases. A large study found that people with a prior heart attack or diabetes are more likely to have gum diseases than their healthy counterparts. The research is presented at the Euro Perio 10, which is the world's leading congress in periodontology and implant dentistry organized by the European Federation of Periodontology. The analysis that I'm talking about, it included close to 5,000 randomly selected participants. The participants completed questionnaires on social demographic and lifestyle parameters, medications and diseases such as type 2 diabetes and even myocardial infarction. A clinical assessment of teeth and soft tissues was performed along with a routine dental and radiological examination weight, height, blood pressure and serum levels of cholesterol and glycylated hemoglobin were also measured. The researchers analyzed whether diabetes, the elevated HbA1c levels and a prior heart attack predicted the likelihood of having severe gum disease. 
The investigators found significant associations between diabetes, the elevated HbA1c levels, prior heart attack history and severe gum disease. The presence of diabetes was assessed from self-reported questionnaires and may even include a broad spectrum of severity from poorly controlled to well-controlled cases. Patients with diabetes were found to be at a higher risk of diabetic complications when their HbA1c levels were more than 48 milliosmol per litre. A total of 3% participants reported a prior heart attack, 4.5% stated that they had diabetes, 3.3% had elevated HbA1c levels and 17.6% of these had severe periodontitis. The researchers hence suggested that people with gum disease are at a greater risk of having a heart attack and also developing diabetes and also that those with diabetes are at a greater risk of getting gum diseases a new diagnostic way to help out in finding Alzheimer's disease. A recent research has used machine learning technology to look at structural features within the brain, including in the regions not previously associated with Alzheimer's. The advantage of this technique is its simplicity and the fact that it can identify the disease at a very early stage when it can be difficult to diagnose. The research that I'm talking about is published in the Nature Portfolio Journal Communications Medicine. Now, doctors currently use a raft of tests to diagnose Alzheimer's disease, including memory and cognitive tests and even various amounts of brain scans. The scans are used to check for protein deposits in the brain and also the shrinkage of the hippocampus, which is the area of the brain linked to the memory. All of these tests can take several weeks both to arrange as well as to process. Now, this new approach that I'm talking about, it requires just one of these, which is a magnetic resonance imaging, which is the MRI brain scan, which is taken on a standard 1.5 Tesla machine, which is commonly found in various hospitals. The researchers adapted an algorithm which developed for using in classifying the cancer tumors and applied it to the brain. They divided the brain into 115 regions and allocated 660 different features such as size, shape and texture to access each region. They then trained the algorithm to identify where changes to these features could accurately predict the existence of an existing Alzheimer's disease. Using data from the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative, the team tested their approach on brain scans from over 400 patients with early and later stage Alzheimer's, healthy controls and patients with other neurological conditions including frontotemporal dementia and even Parkinson's disease. They also tested it with data from over 80 patients undergoing diagnostic tests for Alzheimer's. They found that in 98% of the cases, the MRI-based machine learning system alone could accurately predict whether the patient had Alzheimer's disease or not. It was also able to distinguish between early and late-stage Alzheimer's with fairly higher accuracy in close to about 79% of these patients. Now, waiting for a diagnosis can be a horrible experience for patients and their families. Therefore, if we could cut down the amount of time they have to wait, make diagnosis a simpler process and even reduce some of the uncertainty, that would definitely help a great deal. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.